Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out. Blurble! Get the word out from North Star Games. This is for 4 to 8 players, ages 8 plus. It'll take about 15 minutes to play. And Blurble is a simple party game in which you and another person are going to be racing to try and think of a word that starts with the first letter of another word which will be on a card. I actually reviewed this about three years ago, the original version of this game. Really enjoyed it. North Star Games has gotten their teeth into it, made a couple changes and modifications. Do I like them? Do I dislike them? Is it still a great game? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Blurble. So first of all, we've got a handy dandy rule sheet. It is uh, three small pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. It's very well done, it should have you up and running in no time at all. You only need this part to actually learn how to play. Over here they have frequently asked questions, how to play with younger kids, uh, different rule variants. Big thumbs up on the rule booklet. Also a very simple game so I can teach you how to play right now. Another thing that I'm a huge fan of is this Blurble Educational Exercises. Being a teacher, I love the fact they included this. It shows you how there's different ways you can play this game with different age range to do uh, vocabulary, spelling, storytelling, identifying characteristics, a whole bunch of different ways that you're going to be able to use this as an educational exercise. So huge fan of this. I'll talk a lot more about that in the pros and cons. So in Blurble, you're going to try and get the most points uh, after, well, by being the Blurbler and by by trying to defeat the Blurbler, but that doesn't make much sense to you right now, so let's go over the components, and then we'll get into the gameplay. So component-wise, you're going to get cards, 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 and more cards. You're going to get a whole boatload of these cards. They're very oddly shaped cards. I'll mention that more in the pros and cons. And how this works is you're going to assign one person to be the Blurbler at the beginning of the game. So let's just say we're playing a four-player four version, four-player game, and each one of these stacks of cards is a person playing the game. So how it works is this person will start off as the blur blur and this person will face this person right here. So these two are the only two that are playing right now. You're going to flip over a card and they're going to try and win the card. How you win the card is very simple. You're going to look at the card. You're going to figure out what the first letter of this word is. So in this case, it would be mummy, which starts with an M. And then you are going to try to think of another word that starts with mummy. So there's a couple rules. You can't use proper nouns. You can't say a word that someone already has said. Uh, so we, this guy might just say, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mar Marco. And they'd be like, oh, it's proper noun. Can't do that. But here's the thing. Even if you say the wrong word, you are still in the game. You just keep saying words as fast as you can. So I might say meal, like, you know, something you eat. And you'd be like, hey, yeah, meal. Here you go. This would go in front of you. And this counts as a victory point. So now this person is done for right now. And it's the blur blur versus this person over here. So we'd flip yet another card. And we'd say, uh, oh, it's another M1. We'd go uh, microphone. So let's just say this person said microphone. Yeah, that'd be a good one. They would get the point right here. Now, the blur blur, it's still their turn. So now the blur blur is going to play against this person right here. So you'd flip over another card. And it is a firefighter, which starts with an F. So this person would say fire. And that's not a legal move. You can't say a word that is actually in this word. So firefighter has the word fire in it. So you couldn't say fighter. You couldn't say fight. You couldn't say fire. You'd have to think of a different word. So this person right here would say fox. And now his turn, being the blur blur, would be over. So now this person would then be the blur blur. And he would be playing against this person. So he'd flip another one over. And he'd say lady. And he'd get this point. And then he'd flip another one over. And he's going against this guy right now. And he'd say, uh, ooh, ho, 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 yeah, ho. So then he would get that. And anywho, you're going to continue to do this until either uh, everyone has had one chance to be the blur blur or two chances to be the blur blur, depending on what your player count is. At the end of the game, you're going to see who has the most points. Whoever has the most points will be the king blur blur, and you'll win the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Blurble. Alrighty then, Blurble from North Star Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, it is a light, simple party game, and that's not going to be for everybody. There's no real strategy in this game except for think of words as fast as you can and hope that nobody else has said those words before you and don't use proper nouns. So that's the entire strategy of the game. Also, the original game used to be, I believe, up to 12 players. This one only goes up to 8 players, but take that with a grain of salt, because honestly, you can just tell North Star Games that you're an adult, and you'll do what you want, and you can play with more than 8 players. I played this with 10 players in my classroom, and we just had a perfectly good time playing that. But still, uh, whenever you're going from 12 players to 8 players in a party game, that is a little bit of a downer. Any other cons that I have with the game? 
Um, oh, the cards. I'm not the biggest fan of the cards. The, the shape of the cards. The shape of the cards is really odd, and if you shuffle the wrong way, then they get all mixed up and messed up, and it's not a big deal. It doesn't impact gameplay, but it's just one of those little things where you're like, oh, that's annoying. Why didn't you use regular size cards? How am I supposed to sleeve these? Uh, I'm sure you could probably use a regular sleeve, but it'd still be weird. Anywho, continuing on with the box insert, I hate this box insert. It looks like it's a really nice box insert. You're like, look at that box insert. It holds everything. And then you try and get all the cards at the bottom. You're like, wait, I can't get my finger in there to get all the cards at the bottom. It's annoying. So you just end up slamming it down on the table to get the cards out. Uh, but that, that, once again, doesn't impact gameplay. So it's just a nitpick. Any other cons that I have with the game? No, moving on to the pros. I enjoyed Blurble when I played it three years ago. I still enjoy Blurble now. And I think this is a great version of Blurble aside from the cards. Uh, so what do I like about Blurble? Blurble is one of those rare games that is both an educational game that I could bring into my classroom and I could play with four, five, six, seven, eight-year-olds, especially if I'm willing to modify the rules, but also at the same time, you can bring to a party, get plastered, and play with my friends. So that is always a nice, happy medium if you can successfully meet that. That's like the Rhino Hero type of thing where you can do it with both parties. Now, one other thing that I really, really love about this version of the game over the new version of the game is the fact they include educational exercises. This is absolutely fantastic for kids all the way from two to, you know, uh, 5 to 10, 5 to 8, 7 to 9, spelling games, storytelling games, object identification, vocabulary, identifying characteristics. They really put their due diligence in this educational exercises uh, to help, you know, teachers and, and adults that want to help work with their kids on various different things. And I realistically, you could easily play this with a two to four year old. And I have done it. I played with my three year old and we just made it about a storytelling game and he had a blast with that. So there's lots of different ways you can utilize this game, which I'm a huge fan of. Also component wise, the rules are very well done. The box is going to be a hit or miss thing. Some people are not going to like the shape of the box. I personally don't mind. I think it's visually appealing. And in the end, this is a light, simple, fun party game. It's the kind of game you can play as a family game or with your family at get-togethers. You can play it at a party. You can play it with kids. You can bring it into a classroom and play it. And overall, I am a fan of Blurble. I recommended Blurble then. I recommend Blurble now. Oh, the one big gameplay game change is that you, when you were the Blurbler and you lost being the Blurbler, then the Blurbler were passed to the next person. Now you go all the way around the table. I'm 50-50 on whether or not I like that. Honestly, I kind of like the high risk, high reward of, oh, if you lose, then you're no longer the blur blur. But I understand if you're playing with kids, then you, you don't want them to just immediately fail if they stick at the game and then have to wait, you know, another minute before they have a turn. So, eh, I, I'm hung up on that one. But in the end, Blurble is a fantastic party game. It's a fantastic family game. It's a fantastic educational tool. And it's something I can't highly recommend. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Change the word blurble. What is a blurble? Obviously, it's not a real thing, but give me a fake different def dictionary definition of what you think a blurble is. I think a blurble is a small, you know what? A blurble is a dead gerbil that caught that ate bubble gum. So that's, that's what I'm going to say a blurble is. A blurble is a dead gerbil that ate bubble gum and that's how they died. So kids, don't throw your gum on the ground unless you want blurbles in your yard. Well, let me know in the comments below what you think a blurble is. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.